Hi everyone, this is going to be a short video tutorial on how to use the carbonate chemistry software CCARB for R, which is a package written for R. Um, we're first going to start with a simple calculation where we calculate the carbonate chemistry based on two measured input variables. And then we're going to use the errors function, which is used to calculate the uncertainty of calculated carbonate chemistry parameters. This is not a full lecture on carbonate chemistry. If you don't have the background and but are interested in carbonate chemistry, I advise reading this book by Richard Sebe and Dieter Wolf Gladro, um, which contains everything you need. It's really the carbonate chemistry bible. All right, um, let's start with um, installing the package. I've already written um, what you need to do and I've already installed the package on my computer. So obviously you need R and I use R Studio um, to facilitate um, the coding. So you first install uh, the package, the CCAR package by executing this code. Then you um, load the library, which I already did, I can do it again. And um, then you're basically ready to go to um, well, to do all sorts of carbonate chemistry calculations. CCARB contains many functions, and the one we are going to use now to calculate the carbonate system based on, based on two measured input variables is the so-called CARB function. What I really like about CCARB is its excellent documentation. So you can basically Google for CCARB and uh, check its documentation and you will find um, all sorts of functions as I said here at the beginning and the one we are using is the carb function and the documentation is on page 23 and yeah so first thing you need to set up to run it is the so-called flag and the flag determines uh, which input variables you are going to use to construct or to calculate your carbonate system. So flag six, uh, 17 um, is so in this case when you use flag seven, uh, 15 you use alkalinity and DIC as input variables and it's important to in to have it in the same row so you cannot do DIC and alkalinity uh, you have to have it in the same order that's something I did wrong at the beginning. So you set up your flag, which we set up to 15, and then you set up your variables. So as I said, we're going to use um, alkalinity and DIC. So variable 1 is, for example, um, a typical alkalinity in the ocean would be 2350. And then now, now something specific to CCARB. So as chemical oceanographers, we usually use to um, look at numbers um, and with a unit of micromoles per kilogram, but CCARB wants it as moles per kilogram. So even if you, so, I always use uh, micromoles per kilogram, but then simply um, divide it by one million, or a, a li little bit easier, you can just say uh, to the power of minus six, so e minus six. Then you need to set the second variable because you obviously need two variables to calculate the carbonate system. And that would be DIC in our case. So variable 2 um, equals, let's say, a typical DIC, 2100. And again, because it's a concentration, to the power of minus 6. Okay, so in theory, you can calculate the carbonate system with CCARB with inputting only these variables. So let's do that just for the fun of it. So we run and we get all sorts of calculated output variables. So for example, pH, CO2 concentration, fugacity of CO2, partial pressure of CO2 and so on. But obviously um, that carbonate system doesn't make a lot of sense because it is calculated with in default temperature, salinity, and pressure values them. So CCARB always, or the CARB function always assumes some default values. For example, for temperature, that would be 25 degrees. But in most cases, these default values do not match the conditions you want to calculate the carbonate system for. So you need to specify some additional input variables. For example, temperature. So in, in order to do that, you simply at a temperature or in degrees Celsius, so for example 15 degrees Celsius, you add a salinity 
typical ocean ocean acid in is you would be 35. 35 is also the default value. And then you need to add a pressure, a hydrostatic pressure. Um, and that has the units of bar. So if we want the surface ocean, so at the very surface we would have zero hydrostatic pressure. And if we want to go to let's say um, 10 meters, then we would have there we would have approximately one bar. So that would be one put in here. And then you can, so these are I think the most important parameters, but then in some oceanic regions you obviously have higher nutrient concentration. Concentration, so C carb assumes that as a default value the phosphate and the silicate concentrations are um, zero. But if you are in the Southern Ocean, for example, you often have much higher values. So let's say we set up um, nutrient concentrations Pt for phosphorus um, of uh, one micromoles per kilogram. And again, because it's a concentration, we go to the power of m minus six to convert it into moles per kilogram. And then for silicate, the code is SIT equals, uh, let's say, 10 micromoles per kilogram to the power of minus six. So then we have all the numbers ready to go. But we can do many more input, we can tweak many more input variables. So for example, an, an important one often is the choice of the carbonate chemistry constants. Um, the default value from C carb is, uh, are, the, are the constants by Luca uh, from the studies from 2000. So that would be the default value, but we can also do another one. We can say um, K1, sorry. K1, K2 equals, um, so L would be Luker, that's the default one, or R would be Roy et al. from 1993, so let's use this one for the fun of it. And then we can, you know, we can continue with um, more and more input variables, and um, again, the documentation gives all the different uh, choices. But uh, let's stop here. Oh no, one more thing, the pH scale, always important. Uh, let's set up the pH scale. Um, the default scale used by C carb is the total scale, but let's use the free scale, which would be an F for our calculations. So now uh, we can do another calculation. Let's do it. And here we go. So we can calculate the carbonate system with our input variables as defined here. And yeah, that's the simplest simplest way to do it. Um, you can also use, um, basically, you can make sequences, so you can say, okay, I want to calculate many um, DIC values for the same alkalinity, so let's do that. Let's define a sequence, um, for, let's say from 2000, to um, 2300 um, by one. So we basically create a, a, a vector um, that goes from 2000 to 2300 um, with steps of one micromole per kilogram. So let's define that vector and let's put, DIs, put that vector in here. And then we can calculate that. And then we get lots of carbon systems. <laughs> and uh, just to, well, no, I'm not gonna make a plot now. That's, that's too simple. So that's, that's how we can do a calculation of the, of the mean values of the carbon system. But as I said, the second part now is on the error propagation side of things, which I think is a really, really valuable addition to C carb that came in not so long ago and there's an important paper to have a look at this is all based on on this paper by James Orr uh, a nice read for sure and so in order to calculate um, the error proper or the, the propagated error so the point is that when you have two input variables um, then they and they are measured analytically measured so they will obviously be associated with some sort of error uncertainty and precision 
um, in the measurement. So in order to propagate the uncertainties into all the calculated carbonate system, uh, we, we use this error function. Error function. Sorry, that was a bit unclear, but I think you got what I meant. So this function works like this. So we have, it's called errors. And in, the structure is really similar. So again, we have to define a flag and we stick to our example of alkalinity and DIC. Um, then we basically, let's copy, copy this part here. Um, because that part is identical. So we use the same conditions, input variables. But let's go back to um, 2100 e to the power of minus 6. But additionally, we now need to, oops, come on here. We now need to define um, uncertain or errors. So that is very simple. We define a new um, variable called e var, and I guess the e stands for error. And we say we have an error, a typical error in a alkalinity measurement would perhaps be, hmm, if we're good, maybe two micromoles per kilogram. So e two e to the power of minus six. Then we have error in the variable two. Well, DIC error, analytical errors for DIC, perhaps the same. Two six. And then we can also set up uncertainties for our phosphorus concentrations and our silicate concentrations, and the proper uh, and the and the function assumes uncertainties in um, the carbon in the equilibrium constants and also in the salinity. And there is um, these are in there by default. And again, it's worth to check the documentation. But let's keep it simple and just have. Uh, just assume an error on these two and everything else is default. So if we run it, we get this. This is the output. Um, so we get the output now is not the absolute value of, you know, what we got here from the carb function, but it's the uncertainty, the plus minus. Um, so for example, in our calculation based on the uncertainties on these ones, and the uh, and the associate and the um, default uncertainties in salinity and and so on, we get we get an uncertainty of 0 0.012 in pH, for example, or in pCO2 of 12.2. And um, yeah, so with this with this function, there is no more excuses of not reporting uncertainties in uh, in papers and so on, or in studies in general. And yeah. With that, I'd like to finish this tutorial. I think that's all I have to say for today. Thanks.